Anne, we start. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really excited uh, to have you on the show. Obviously, uh, German connection is, is great. And um, you're the first uh, female athlete we have on the show. And it's, it's exciting. We're the, the second triathlete. We had Sebastian Kiele on the show. And um, it, it has been just amazing to uh, research your career over the last couple of days. And um, I'm, I'm really thankful that you take the time to join us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, I just want to quickly go through your, your career because it is just amazing uh, what you have already achieved and how versatile you are as a, as a sports person. Uh, obviously, you started in short course ITU events, uh, but before that, you had incredible, I think your father was a sports teacher, and so you were starting in modern pentathlon. Uh, you did Indiaka. I think this is kind of a volleyball game, but you will, you will tell us more yeah. about this. Um, you had uh, Olympic Games in London. 2012, you went to Olympic Games in Rio. Uh, you had four starts in long course triathlon and incredibly successful uh, with third in Kona, uh, then a win in, in, um, in Denmark, okay. and then obviously the first tri uh, place in 2019 in Hawaii. So welcome to the show and just an incredible career. Thank you very much. <laughs> we, we have a little clip just from the beginning, from the ITU, and I ask Will now maybe to play this for us, then we can see and you can, you can tell us um, maybe later a little bit about it, please. This is amazing. Yeah, that looks really yes, amazing. I get goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I was just wanted to ask, how is it when you see these events? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, all these... I remember every single day. This first clip was in Auckland, where I won the grand final, and yeah, second of course was Hamburg, one of my absolute favorite races. And yeah, it still gives me goosebumps when I remember that. Very good. Hamburg must be special. Obviously, it's uh, Germany. It's home crowd. Obviously, it's, it's the other side of Germany because you're more from, from, you're from Bayreuth, so more at the southwest yeah. part of Germany. But Hamburg still, I'm sure uh, that the, the audience was amazing. It was fully packed with people. The day was amazing. And, and then pulling off such an event, is, I'm sure it's an amazing uh, feeling. Yeah, it's definitely it's the moment I will always remember my life. And it gives me so much energy for the rest of my career because I always have this win in my head. And it gives me so much strength and power. And... Yeah, the atmosphere was just amazing. I mean, if 250,000 people scream at you, you can't nothing do anything okay. else than running for your life and hope for the best. And uh, the spectators definitely was the, yeah, the winning factor on this day. And the next day we won the World Championships in, in the relay team. So it was a perfect, a really perfect holiday, uh, weekend mm. and with two wins. And it will always be in my mind. It was like fantastic. Fantastic. Can you take us back at the beginning? So I, I said before, your father is a sports teacher. And so you grew up doing all kinds of sports. What was your favorite and what did you learn? I mean, I started with tennis when I was five years old. But yeah, I grew up obviously in a very sporty environment. My father was a sports teacher and my mother always wanted us to, to play music. So my mother pulled us to the musician side and my father pulled us to the sporty sides. And so sport was always a, a part of my life. We did everything on the bicycle. We hardly took the car for, for going out. So yeah, I... I, I I think I got my first bicycle when I was three years old and I stand on the skis when I was three and yeah my father was always like pushing us to try every kind of sports 
and he don't wanted us to be in just one sport and get too ambitious in one sport. He wanted to make our horizon very big and give us a lot of range of motions and a lot of, yeah, he always wanted us to try everything. And, and then when we, when we saw everything, we should decide what we really want to do. So that, I think that was a good thing. And you're world, world champion now, obviously in, in Ironman Triathlon, but you have another world champion title? <laughs> yeah, in, in, in Yaka actually. So that's a very, very, very small sport. I mean, hardly anyone knows it, but it's, it's played like volleyball, just five against five, but with the same rules like volleyball. And the Yaka is a, yeah, it's a ball with feathers and you play it with one hand, but um, the systematic is like volleyball. So it's pretty much volleyball, five against five over net. And yeah, we were, became world champion, I think in 2000 with the mixed team. Yeah in Estonia. Very good. And you did modern pentathlon as well? Yes, but just for a very short time because I was allergic to horses and it was not really a good start in my pentathlon career. So I skipped always the horse riding. So it was more a modern a quadratlon than a pentathlon. Okay, okay, and as well, swimming, obviously, we are both, I'm from Freiburg, so Southwest Germany, and, and you're from Bayreuth. So swimming was, is, for me, was never something I really learned. I think swimming was enough when you didn't drown, uh, at least in, in my part of Germany. And yeah. swimming was not really your sport, but that was something which motivated you to really uh, challenge yourself to learn it. Yeah, because I actually, I hated it. I was always the kid at the um, lake who was outside the lake while everyone else was swimming inside the lake because I hated the water. And in school we had swimming obviously, but I was always sick and yeah, I never really go to the swim lessons. So, and I really hated it. And yeah, that was the only sports that I, yeah, I was bad. I was really bad. And every other sports come very easily to me. Every, in every sport, I become very good very easily. And swimming was always really challenging me. And it, I, hate, I had this like hate-love relationship with that. And that was really something that pushes me because I thought, oh, it's exactly what I want to do because it will definitely be the challenge of my life to get that done. <laughs> But how, how is this when you, when you pick a sport where obviously swimming is a big part of it and you, you don't really like the sport and then I think you went a very special way to say, okay, I'm going to take this head on and you bought a ticket uh, and you flew halfway around the world and you said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to learn how to swim, correct? Yeah, um, it was later in my career. I mean, I, I started when I was a student in the University in Munich where I met my coach, Dan Loran. Okay. And the problem was I was always training on my own in Munich. I didn't have a group. I, yeah, I was literally on my own and my coach wasn't a professional coach at the moment because, yeah, I mean, he was a degree from university and he had different jobs. So, um, yeah, I was literally on my own. And I, But I always had the dream to become yeah, the best athlete I could be. And I saw this very famous training squad from Darren Smith. He had at that time the best women um, squad in the world. And I mean, I was an, a nobody and I was so afraid to, to uh, contact him that I, yeah, I somehow did. And he said, yeah, come on, uh, come in my squad. I'm interested in you. And in between two weeks, I packed all my stuff and moved to Australia. <laughs> With a one-way ticket. With a one-way ticket, yes. Because he couldn't tell me when I was able to come back. So, yeah, I had a one-way ticket. And, yeah, when I started. Very good. I like that. I had a one-way ticket to Dubai when I came, yeah, which was very unusual because you normally needed a two-way ticket, but somehow we managed. So I had as well a one-way ticket to Dubai in 2002. So maybe similar start of, of, a, of a career somehow, yeah. Um, but then I think I read as well something interesting on, on the, one of the first runs you had. You had an encounter with a special animal from Australia. Oh, yes. Yeah, I met a really, really big kangaroos. I mean, I heard about kangaroos, but I didn't expect that the kangaroo was that big. I mean, it was a massive kangaroo <laughs> and it needed um, hill reps. And I was so exhausted it's that right up the hill where I was finished. And then there was this big kangaroo with a six pack. And I was so impressed that it made me run even faster. I mean, that was really amazing. <laughs> Very good. 
<laughs> you think it was a hallucination, you run and you're all exhausted. All exhausted yeah, I thought something. the kangaroos may be my size, but that was a massive one. But they are obviously different kind of kangaroos in Australia. Very good. You were speaking about Dan Laurent, who is obviously a super famous coach, uh, super successful with, with Jan Frodeno and with you. Um, and you studied at university in Munich and you graduated um, as well as sports scientist. And, and he said, oh, I'm, I'm looking for somebody who I can train to practice my triathlon training. And, and he picked you. That was a good choice. <laughs> I think it was a good choice from both of us. Yeah, we studied together. We were fellow students. And um, yeah, he was... Uh, semi-professional um, cyclist before and he uh, retired his or he stopped his career and said oh, I want to be a coach and yeah he we, we had a triathlon course together in university and he saw me and said oh my god your training is like horrible I will um, give you some training advice uh, uh, write you some um, training plans and see how far we can get with that yeah, and the rest is history. So since 14 years, we are training together. He's my coach. And yeah, it's amazing how someone can yeah, be on my side for so long and give me like new training um, stimuli every mm -hmm. year and make me better and better and better. It's, I think it's quite special. And he is a person is quite special and quite important for me. So I'm very, very thankful that I've met him in Munich. And yeah, I will continue with him, of course. Very good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, who do you consider the biggest mentor in your life? Is it, uh, is it him or is there anybody else who you, you feel you get motivated by and you, you follow the footsteps in a way? I mean, Dan is for sure the, the yeah, in, in, in terms of my sports career, who influenced me the most, but I won't miss my, um, my experience with um, um, Darren Smith and his sport because mm -hmm. I mean, Training as a pro is, is one thing, but living as a pro and be a pro is another thing. And I think my time in Australia where, where with Darren Smith and all the world-class athletes around me, it really makes me like a better athlete myself. So it really shows me what it means to be an athlete, how to live as an athlete. Uh, far from the... It doesn't mean you, you have to swim, bike and run. It has... Yeah, you need... To, get your nutrition right you have to get your sleep right you have to get your yeah recovery right and there's so much more than just swimming biking and running and i definitely learned that in my time in australia and i grew as a yeah as a professional athlete and as a person mm -hmm. and yeah i won't mm -hmm. miss that time i think if the choice is removed and you put everything on one card i think that that gets a, a very special mindset going and uh, it looks like uh, you're you're very self intrinsic motivated to just be the best Anna you can you can be. Yeah, that's definitely something I learned um, in Australia that you can't influence what everyone else is doing. You always mm -hmm. the only yeah enemy you have is, is your own. You always need to beat yourself and be a better athlete than you were yesterday, and that should be your biggest motivation because everything else is not under your control, but you can always control to be better and faster and yeah as yourself and that's something that really keeps me motivated because yeah you never know i mean you, it's not in your hand with place you make if you win a race or not, but you can always yeah, perform the very best on this day. And if you've done that, you should be proud of yourself no matter which mm -hmm. place you make in the end. I think that's a big thing in triathlon as well, obviously that you're racing against yourself and you're challenging yourself. And that's, that's a good mindset you have there. Well, well, well done. Um, if you would ask Dan about your personality, what would he say is a big, uh, strong point of your personality? Oh, maybe you have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Uh, I think I'm very German, so I'm... I do what she says <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm very ambitious and focused and yeah, willing to think? put in a lot of work, but <laughs> I'm not very special. I'm a normal person, so I don't know what you would say. Yeah, we ask him, we ask him. Yeah, um, ask him. I would be interested as well. <laughs> um, how much do you think is talent and given from your, your father, your genetics and all the, the work you've done before and how much you put into the, into the work, yeah? What, what do you think? Is it 50-50 or is it rather the hard work you put in every day which makes you the champion you are today? I think it's a bit different in short course and long course. I think the shorter the distance, the more the talent plays a role. 
So if you're not able to move your legs quickly, you're just not fast enough for short course. And um, long course is a different story. I think long course is 50% talent and body and 50% mindset. So the longer the distance, the more your head comes into play. And um, yeah, it's just some different kind of sports, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you have any rules you live by? Anything you, you have in you when you said this is something I'm, I'm holding on to every day when you go for training? Yes, I think I always say I have this little voices inside me which pushes me. And as long as the little voices inside me say you can do better, you can do quicker, you can do, mm -hmm. yeah, you can improve yourself. That's my biggest motivation. And I, I don't care what everyone else is thinking. As long as I have this voices in me, uh, means I can, yeah, I can, yeah, make my dreams reality, mm -hmm. come reality, you know? Because when I started triathlon, I was uh, absolutely nobody. I was uh, uh, someone who couldn't swim. I mean, and now I have uh, six world championships medals and, and was in two Olympic games. So you just never know what life has, has for you, you know? And if you have big dreams, don't be afraid to follow them because if your little voices inside you tell you you can do it, maybe you should give it a try. Very good. We have people can obviously send in questions and we got one from a very special person, uh, our Ultraman Romeo. He did uh, double triathlons and he does this always for charity. Uh, he's a he's a first uh, healthcare worker uh, um, and, and he's asking if you would not be an athlete, what would you be? What would be your job? I have absolutely no idea i really wish when i finish my triathlon in korea i would find something i'm so passionate and and driven about but uh, at the moment i don't have any idea i'm so happy that i found triathlon in my life and mm -hmm. that's something which really yeah fulfills me and i'm really passionate about and i hope when i retire i will find something else but at the moment triathlon is what i love and what i do and i don't have any, any other plans so uh, i live for my plan a and i hope if that's okay. ending then i will find another plan a in life that's nice um obviously you started your career triathlon with itu and you have been incredibly successful as you mentioned before we saw in some of the events um what is your highlight of these things when you look back Oh, there are so many highlights because, I mean, you always maybe remember the the races where you finished first on the podium, but it doesn't mean that was your best race ever. I think the races which influenced me the more, where I grew the more was um, in London in 2013. And I had start number one and I was fighting for the gold medal. And then I had a panic attack in the water and I came out last and my whole hopes were gone. Everyone was really disappointed but I mean I was the last in the transition so the camera was on my bike because I was obviously the start number one mm -hmm. and but I fight through I didn't give up and I think that was something a race I always remember and I think it was one of my best performances because it looked like yeah uh, hope was gone I mean the medal was gone and in the end I got um, the third I got the bronze medal and I think that was one of my best stresses ever also I disappointed everyone and, but I was very proud of myself that I haven't given up and I continued pushing even yeah everything was gone yes yes an Olympic Games must be unbelievable yeah this is something outstanding I think every sports person uh, wants to attend this and you, you had the, the pleasure to do it twice London as you said and then Rio 2016 yeah I mean the Olympic Games I mean that's a dream of every sportsman yeah and um, it's it's something really special because you're also we are individual sport we are part of a very exquisite team you're you 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 start for your home country and yeah you're part of of something bigger and um yeah, no many people can say they did trying to the Olympic Games or so. I never got the result I wanted to, but mm -hmm. I always give it my very best. And I'm very proud of these two experience because it's very special in our athletes' lives, yes. We, and you had your second career started in 2017 when you kind of switched and you said you, you changed your engine when you were turning 30 from a petrol to, uh, from a diesel, uh, from a petrol to a diesel engine. 
I try to. <laughs> I'm still in the in the change. <laughs> okay. We have another clip, and and I will, if you wouldn't mind, to play that second clip we have prepared. Yeah. This is just unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> how is it looking? Have, how many times you have watched it? Uh, none. I mean, no. I was part of this race, so I, I don't, yeah, I don't watch videos about that because I, I have those feelings in my head, and and that's enough because I know how I felt. I was part of this great race, and yeah, I don't have to watch it all the time. I really enjoyed watching and doing the research and, and looking at all this and re-watching it and finding the, the moments. It was, it was really exciting. I think it's just an unbelievable event to do this. And your, 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 stats, your stats of these Ironman long distance events, you had four, four starts, you had two wins. Um, this is just simply unbelievable. So I think you really found your diesel engine. And I'm afraid if you haven't found it yet, then I don't know who else can beat you uh, in, in the world. Unbelievable. I think there are a lot of girls outside who can beat me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just have to look in Switzerland, to Switzerland or Great Britain or whatever. I mean, there's, I mean, we have a really great dense um, women field at the moment. And I think a lot of girls can beat each other. And that, which drives me really, because you have to be on top of your game to win a race like that, because otherwise there are, a few other girls who can be you easily. So it's really great to have such great athletes around you because that makes the quality so much better. Mm -hmm. It was at seven hours and 30 minutes. Lucy Charles was ahead uh, of the race. And I think you learned in ITU that you can catch them because obviously your, your biking was always so strong and then your strongest discipline is the run. Um, how can you, you remember that moment when you passed her? Of course, I mean, that's so much time in Ironman, you have to think about that. So, yeah, it was, but it was different than ITU because in ITU, it's so normal that uh, the leading change, you know, normally you run in a pack and then the strongest sprinter will take the win. And it's quite normal. But in Ironman, it's something special, especially with Lucy because she's one of the toughest racers out there. She does everything on her own. She does the honest race of all of us because we are riding in the pack behind her, chasing her the whole day. And then, overtake her and destroy her dream for the third time. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard because she's a, a absolutely nice person. I train a lot with her in, 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 in um, Triple Santa, so I know her very well. And, and yeah, it's very hard, but I think she's tough and she's young and she will get the win one day for sure in future. And yeah, it wasn't an easy pass, but I mean, everyone wants to win and I want to win as well. And I'm kind of used to come from the back because my swim is just not the strongest and yeah so I learned over the time that a race is over when you cross the finish line at the end of the run and until then everything is possible and um, yeah I always believe I can win a race no matter which yeah how far back I am so you just have to do what you need to do in the moment stay in the moment and hope for the best and give your absolute best and yeah it worked out very well last year. Fantastic. Yeah, well done. Yeah, congratulations. I think it's just an unbelievable achievement. Yeah. And obviously, it was the first time a double pack with Jan Fodeno, Germany, uh, you from Germany. I think it was the first time ever, correct? Yeah, yeah, it was the first time ever. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I think that will have a big impact, obviously, on the whole community in Germany. So, uh, overall, I think the German athletes are so strong. Do you, why do you think is this that the German um, nation is so strong at the moment in, in Ironman? 
I, I mean, I got this question asked a lot, but I don't really have an answer on that. I just know that our boys are obviously dominating Hawaii uh, since, uh, I think, five or six or seven years. Mm -hmm. So if a sport's very popular, it like makes the um, people do the sport because everyone's saying, oh, we have heroes in that sport. So mm -hmm. it's a good motivation to do it myself because if I see someone can do it, why can't I do that? Yeah. And um, yeah, and now we have good women as well. And I think the more good women you have, the better the quality is. And if you have a lot of yeah, challenge in your own country that yeah, put the sport on another level. And maybe that's the reason why we are very good in that. And on the other hand, we have good um, training facilities as well. I mean, we have, yeah, we have mountains, we have lakes. Yeah, we have quiet roads. So maybe that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something we Thank you. like to do. <laughs> it's a very nice, um, I think, tradition that the winners go back one and a half hours before the cutoff time um, to welcome all the, the other athletes coming in after 17 or the 16, 17 hours. Do you remember a special moment when you went back to the, to the finish line? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was, uh, I think he was... 85 year old Japanese guy who made it this time because last year I was there in 2018 he missed the finish shoot uh, or the cut of the finish line by I think a few minutes and he couldn't finish and this time he said he trained more and he made it to the finish line and it was just so emotional to see wow. an 85 year old guy doing the same horrible race I raced in maybe 18 hours or something it was just unbelievable and the relief of the when they cross the finish line is just unbelievable and i think it's a really really great ritual that we celebrate together because i mean ironman is different from itu racing because mm -hmm. the finish uh, yeah the moment when you cross the finish line is just such incredible thing and it doesn't matter which place you you make in the end it's you you have a goal and you 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 finished your goal and that's something you should have respect from everyone because I mean, people have normal jobs, they do it as a hobby and they finish that horrible race in this brutal sun. And that is something really special. And I was very proud that I was on the finish line. I could give the lay or can't hand over the lays to the, to the last ones. Fantastic. How is life different when you are a world champion Ironman? You, you wake up sometimes up and you, you find the medal and you just feel it and see, is it really true or is it only a dream? How is it? Uh, no, I, th I mean, maybe you think you feel different when you achieve that, but you don't. You're still the same person. Yeah. It's just like, you... you yeah, it's addition to my to my life and mm -hmm. it's a very very special moment i will always get the uh, strength of it and I, I i saw that if you if you live for your dream and you hold on to your dream even if yeah i mean my season wasn't perfect at all i was injured half a year before the race and i couldn't run for half a year mm -hmm. and i still hold it on on my dream and i i did every day what i could do even even if it was go walking for two minutes uh, without any pain but i did every day what i could and finally i reached my goal so um yeah it's a dream come true but it doesn't change my life i mean i'm still the same like i was before and i'm still motivated i'm still hungry for more and yeah i think that's the reason because i think i can get better and that's the reason what pushes me and it's not the titles i have won great Great. That's a good. That's a good way to think. Yeah, very great. Um, do you change? You feel you change your personality when you put your your swim goggles on? Is there something in your head which goes into your race mode? How how much is Anna normal and Anna race mode different? I think that's a big big difference. I mean, a very in normal life, I'm very uh, unsecure and unsure. I'm always doubting myself, and I'm not really confident in my in my performance. But as soon as I put my superhero costume on, I think um, something changed. I, when, when the starter goes and the race is on, I think everything is possible. And I always think I can win the race, no matter how, how the preparation was, how good I feel. But in a race, your mindset is completely different. You're so confident and I can't describe it. It's, 
that's the reason I think why I don't train in my race equipment. Mm -hmm. I never wear my racing shoes. I never put my disc mm -hmm. wheel in because that's something a uh, feeling I just want to have in a race. And I think that pushes me because my bike is then super fast and everything feels different. And mm -hmm. I always feel everything is possible. Even if I come out of the water last, like an ITU, I always have this big, big hope in me, which I don't have outside racing. I don't know where it comes from, but it really changed, <laughs> it changed me a lot. Very good. Okay. I hear as well that when, you, when you're running and you come to these kind of slightly dark places that you have a song in your head and you're singing to yourself and you, uh, what's the song right now in your head when, you, when you're uh, training? Yeah, that's a song from Eminem and, and Rihanna. It's, I, I don't know, the is, I think it's, I like the way it hurts okay. and that really reflects that because I think she's singing, I like the way it hurts, yeah, I don't know the way. She said something, it, it's okay, it. I like the way it hurts, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it reminds me always that it's okay, you have to feel the pain, then you know you're in the right zone. Okay, we will find it and we will play it in a few minutes. <laughs> Very good. Um, and what do you think is the next big thing in triathlon? Do you think it needs to change somehow? Is there anything you feel like um, at different distances or you, you're happy with the, with the Ironman? Is this you will focus on? Uh, defending your title it's now in february I, I hear yes for sure i will go for that and of course i hope there will be another race before i would be really interested in the pdo format which was meant to be in Samorin, like the the collins cup mm -hmm. i think that's a really great format to race in a team mm -hmm. because i know that from itu and i think it's always special i also we do individual sports racing a team is something really special and I would really like to do that and I hope it will take place next year and we, we see if that's a, a great format and yeah I'm really looking forward to that and I think that can be a really great addition to Ironman racing. Okay very good. Uh, we have a lot of young talents here as well in Dubai. We have a nice club, My Try Club Dubai and um, if you're looking back into your history what tip would you give yourself uh, going 15, 20 years back, so okay, Anne, do this. This is a good lesson you should learn um, to help you in your career. Is there anything you, you look back and you think you would have wished you would have known? No, because I think every decision I, I took in the past made me the person I am today. And I, I'm, ha I'm thankful for every mistake I made because you just learn from mistakes and you have to find your own way. I think no one can tell you what to do because everyone is different and everyone needs something else. And you just have to find it out, make a lot of mistakes and mm -hmm. learn from them and make it better the next time and, and always hold on on your dream and never give up. I think that's something I, I, I it was driving me, driving me and that was my way and yeah but everyone has to find his own way and okay. i think you can just learn by mistakes very good if you had a time machine would you rather go forward or backwards neither i want to stay in present because i don't regret anything from the past and i don't want to have a look at the future okay. because i think the future is the future and i want to be yeah, excited about the future and yeah i i like to live in the present and and see and what's coming in the future very good that's good i think that's a good way of living just to live in the presence yeah very good um if you you said you work with dan for such a long time and how did your training approach change over the last years did you, did you what did you implement did you do more um work in the gym or what are the tips you would give someone when the people get into the sport that they should do and focus more on i think what i learned is that consistency is the key yeah. i mean um it doesn't matter if you have one superstar week and then you're injured for three months because you don't have, <laughs> I mean, you won't get better with that. The most important thing, especially if you start, do less, but do it regular on a regular basis. Then, yeah, it's the key of success in endurance sports. Mm -hmm. Get the mileage in consistently. Okay, okay. Do you have any uh, swim or running cycling gadgets you, you really like and something on your bike or something which is really special or you use any special equipment? Uh, I am not a gadget <laughs> fan at all. I have my watch. I use it for everything. And yeah. um, I mean, 
especially for Dan because he's not around and he needs all my training started to see how I, how I am. And otherwise I would do anything by feeling. <laughs> I'm not a gadget man. Okay. <laughs> Um, and when you when you come to a day of the race, you have a certain ritual which starts before the, the, the race, the day before and on the day. Is there anything specific you always do before a race? Yes, I think it's a whole week leading up to the race. I mean, I'm very structured. I'm very German, I think. Um, especially the two days before I have my rituals. I always eat the same. I always eat basmati rice with... Um, yeah, low fiber um, veggies, so carrots or zucchini or something, and a little bit protein, maybe a chicken or a little bit feta cheese or whatever. So, and in the morning, I always eat my oats. And yeah, the training day before a race is always the same. I do a, a, smart, um, a short brick um, session in the morning with a bike and a run, and then a swim in the in the race on the race course and yeah it's very structured so every pre-race and race day looks always the same and it doesn't matter if it's long course or short course it's always the same it's like a ritual and it makes me calm and okay yeah it's something i hold on and it gives me confidence and i just have to tick boxes because you're so nervous before a race and that gives you a little bit safety or something to hold on and and tick boxes leading up to the race okay. we I, when i was listening to a german podcast uh, from you you were mentioning the the word schweinehund and i don't i didn't really find the translation so it's a big dog but it's somebody it's in your mind playing games with you you want to stop and i I just played a song you have in your head, I think, when it's coming. <laughs> okay, this is this is what you play in your head when the Schweinehund comes. Yeah, I think it's it's part of Iron Man to embrace the pain because I mean you have to live with the pain and the pain is something good because the pain shows you that you do something extraordinary on this day and you have to convince your mind to push through the pain and and yeah love the pain and, and say thank you pain now i'm doing something special and yeah that's a way i deal with that and yeah very good there was another german word i found was leidenschaft yeah and i don't think as well there's a word it's leiden it's pain and then the achievement, that, that's a combination I think we, we have in our language. And I think that really describes quite nice what you said, that you, you, you kind of enjoy the pain and you go through it and you enjoy then the achievements you have, you have had. Yeah, I be, I, because I think you can't get a great achievement if it's not combined with pain, because otherwise it wouldn't be so special. Mm -hmm. I mean, the greatest achievements are the the things you suffered so much for you, you you waited so long for that and that makes the the winnings or the achievements so great because yeah there's a lot of effort into that very good you have been many times in dubai already uh you have been in the middle east with bahrain you won events in dubai you had second place in bahrain uh, so overall really really good you enjoy the middle east yeah, definitely. Especially I, I was uh, in Abu Dhabi a lot at my short course distance as well. So I was pretty much in every uh, little state there. And yeah, I really love racing there. I love the heat and it's like the dry heat I really like. So yeah, it was always a great experience there. And I was always yeah pretty successful there. Very good. We have a great community here. And over the last years, it has grown tremendously. The people from Tri Dubai, who is one of the most successful clubs, uh, I think, worldwide. Uh, they're really doing an amazing job just by promoting the events. And you've seen, obviously, all the, the, the big events we have with, with Ironman in Dubai and Bahrain. So it's, it's really good. So uh, next time, uh, is there any plans for 2021 to, to visit us again in Dubai? I mean, normally Dubai is the uh, beginning of February and this time is um, in Hawaii, hopefully. So I, I can't go for Dubai this year, but it's always my first race since I do a long course triathlon. It's always um, Dubai. So I really like to do it again, but maybe not next year because I hope there will be Hawaii mm -hmm. in February. Okay, very good. We have obviously a lot of people getting into the sport and we have seen a lot of people picking it up during, during COVID. 
uh, they started going out cycling, running, swimming. So I want to ask you if you have a few tips for, for people when they get into the sport. What is your uh, top tip for the day before the event? You, you said before you have a special meal, but what do you think people should do when they have their first event? Uh, do you have any tips you can give them? Yeah, be organized. Definitely be organized because the least thing you want to have is be stressed on race day. So get all your things done the day before. And um, the race day is the, because it will any be may be stressful, but it should be the least stress as possible. So be very, yeah, like organized, do some lists. I always have a list with a time schedule on it. I, I introduced it in my first ever uh, triathlon, so 10 years ago, and I still have it I, on this list is where I stand up, when I eat my breakfast, when I head off for, for the race venue, when I do my warm up. And this list I always have in my pocket and I stick to it and I get really aggressive if I can't um, stick to that plan. You always have to be a little bit, yeah, not too strict, but I mean, it gives me confidence and it keeps away a lot of stress if you're organized. Okay. Sounds very German. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Good. A tips for this, a tip for the swim? Um, it depends if it's your first um, triathlon or not. And if you're not used to swim with a lot of people in the open water, go a little bit on the side. Don't put your, your start, uh, your start in the middle of the pack because that can be really, really yeah, scary. And I did that. And in my first triathlon, I was absolutely shocked. I, was, I thought I'd get a panic attack. Mm -hmm. So I was so squashed in between the people. And so go on the sides and be calm and, and yeah, found your rhythm on the first few strokes. And um, yeah, because you always tend, because you're so nervous to go too hard and then you blew up and everything gets really stressful. So be calm, take your time and go a little bit outside and then you will have a better, yeah, overall performance very good and then when you transition onto the bike what do you think is a good tip for people on the bike yeah um concentrate on your own don't get distracted by what everything everyone else is doing around you because most people tend to hammer it in the beginning and then they blew up in the end or whatever so stick to your plan know what you're good at and try to yeah just focus on yourself and um, the race is over when you cross the finish line after the run and so stick on your own race plan and uh, i think that's the best solution for you or it's a garant for the best outcome mm -hmm. and then when you come to the run that's your strongest discipline uh, what, what's your tip just run as fast as you can like there would be a kangaroo <laughs> yeah, if it's short course or sprint triathlon, definitely run as fast as you can and, and pray for the best to see the finish line. When you race Ironman, that's maybe not the, the good, um, a good tip. But definitely practice running after um, cycling. I haven't done it in my first triathlon. Mm -hmm. and I was absolutely shocked. My, my, my legs felt like, yeah, so like jelly in my legs. So it was crazy because it's something completely different to run off a bike than just running so really do the brick session before you enter your first triathlon and get used to it that your legs will feel wobbly in the first few k's but it will get better i swear very good um and recovery tips um, yeah, uh, my recovery tip is um, to really rest between the sessions. I mean, it's not about getting the mileage in, it's about the rest time you have in between the, the session, which makes you better. Make sure that your nutrition is right, especially the uh, 30 minutes after a really hard session. It's really important to get your proteins in that window. And yeah, it makes a big difference. When you come home after a long travel and you come to see your family, your mom, what is she cooking for you when you come home after a, a, a success in Hawaii? Uh, she knows that I'm addicted to veggies. So there's always a big, big pot with veggies. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, that I can just, I eat it cold. So there's always a pot with veggies on the stove and I can always sneak from that. And I'm really, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Very good. 
you have any other treats after an event where you say, okay, this is what I'm, because maybe you don't do it while you prepare for events, but after an event, after Ironman Hawaii Championship 2019, what was there any indulging moments? Oh, I'm such a chocolate addict. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, that's probably my worst addiction ever, the chocolate addiction. It's very, very hard to get over that. So, yeah, I really try not to eat any chocolate or any sugar before racing or the month before a race to get in shape, obviously. But after that, I go completely crazy and I love pizza and all the things I don't eat normally. Okay. So you get really, uh, I mean, pizza, pasta, chocolate, everything. And then you put on five kilograms in between one week and uh, it's horrible. But I mean, sometimes you need it for your head. Um. Is there anything on your bucket list you want to achieve? Uh, let's say triathlon wise or, or obviously other things in life you, you, haven't, you haven't achieved? I mean, uh, in terms of triathlon, I definitely have on my bucket list the challenge in Roth. Oh. So that's kind of my home race. And it was actually the first triathlon I was, I was live at. So, um, I really wished it would be this year, but I mean, Corona didn't make it happen. So I hope for next year and that's definitely one race I want to, I want to race. Yeah. Very good. I have a few quick questions and just you give me a quick answer, but the best day of my career was? Oh, there are so many things. So the Olympics were definitely a highlight in my career, but winning Hamburg was something really special as well. The hardest day of my career was? The race in London where I fought for the gold medal and got out of the water last and everyone was so disappointed. It was definitely a very, very hard race. I wish I had. Many, many great years ahead. Very good. Uh, it's too early too. To do any re retirement plans. <laughs> Good. We like to hear that. Yeah. My hero is? Oh, I have so many heroes, but really inspiring is um, Christina Vogel. Do you know her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I met her at the at the sports gala and she really impressed me because I, I, I was together with her in, in London, in Rio. Yes. And now she's in the wheelchair and she's yes. amazing. Yeah, yes. so Christina, she was really inspiring. Yes, Christina is obviously a super famous German track sprinter and, and she fell in training and, and uh, since then she is in the wheelchair. And, um, but again, incredible strengths shown and, and recovering and inspirational for everyone. So yes, yes, okay, yeah, absolutely, yeah, I mean, absolutely he, hero. He got a um, gold medalist in London, then he had yeah. a really, really bad accident, and everyone think everything is over, and then she did it again and win gold in, in Beijing, uh, in, in, in Rio, and then she has again this bad accident, mm -hmm. and she's still so confident and such a nice person, full of hope, and it's really inspiring. Very good. The greatest stride lead of all times? Jan Frodeno. <laughs> Good. Yes, that's very nice. Do you have a funny or strange habit? Maybe you have to ask friends of mine. <laughs> I don't know if I'm funny. No, I, I think I'm very boring. I don't have any funny things, no. I don't think so. Do you collect anything? When I was young, I collected stamps. Okay. But at the moment, I don't collect anything. Gold I have medal. a very small flat, so I can't collect right. <laughs> very much. Uh, do you have a party trick or any special skill? I know you play violin, guitar, piano, anything else you can impress people at the party besides being obviously a world champion? I can do funny things with my tongue. I okay. can split my tongue. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I think that's something really special. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, if you go to karaoke, what song would you pick to sing? Oh, I can't sing. I, I think I, I would never ever do karaoke. Um, no, I've... But you sing the song always in your head, yeah? You have that Eminem song, 
or was he? Yeah, maybe I would think that. <laughs> that <reflection. laughs> <You're> <laughs> the Very good. Um, if you write a book about your career, what is going to be the title? A winner is just a loser who tried one more time. Good. Okay. Good. Very good. I like that. Um, you have a favorite three course meal. What would be your favorite three courses? Before a race? No, every, just for a nice evening out. Okay. Um, definitely a big, big dessert. What? Uh, what's for Maine? It's not very important, but the dessert must be big and chocolatey and dark brown. Very good. Okay, very good. <laughs> very good. That, that sounds good. Yeah, I like a chocolate fondant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Very good. Um, do you have a favorite quote? Yes, I actually have. I have a quote, and it says it's from Václav Havel, and it's hope is not the conviction that something will turn out not well, but the certainty that something makes sense regardless of how it turns out. So that's a quote who, yeah, follows me for my whole career because you don't have any influence how, how things turn out, but you always have to be, uh, yeah, certain that the way is important and, um, yeah, that it doesn't, it's not important how it turns out. It's important that you think it's worth to go the path. And yeah, I think that's something I always have in my mind. Very good. That's very nice. I like that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. If you could spend a day with one person dead or alive, who would that be? I think I would spend a day with a very, very good swimmer. And I wish he could show me how to swim properly and how it feels to be a good swimmer. I really, really want to know how that would feel. So, yeah, maybe with Michael Phelps. <laughs> Michael Phelps, very good. Let's see what we can what we can do. If you have one piece of advice and wisdom you could you could pass on to young triathletes or people all around, what, what would you say? Believe in your dreams, because yes. you never know. Maybe they were possible, and even if not, it's always worth to try for because you will always regret it if you don't. Good, very good, Anne. I want to thank you, uh, and I'm, I'm, I was really good fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. And, much? Um, I'm looking forward to see you in Dubai, and hopefully you can plan a few days before and after. I know some good places for some good chocolate desserts. So. Uh, oh, but then after the race, please. After the race, <laughs> very good. Yeah. Um, so maybe if you don't mind, I would like to uh, take you out with my family, and we, we show you some good places here in Dubai, show you around. And oh, I would love that. Special. Yeah, that thank would you. be great. So it would be great pleasure. Um, and thanks for taking the time. And, and obviously, you're super proud to be German, to see you winning the style you live uh, in the races. I think the way you present yourself, all your, all your uh, motivation you have, I think that's, that's fantastic to see. I think you're really a good, a good role model for, for everything. Um, so thank you. Thank you for the sport and for what you do for, for us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> yes. We, um, we have some more superstars in triathlon coming up. I just got before. I got a confirmation from one. I'm not going to reveal who it is, but he's a very exciting person. And we have our next guest. I'm very excited. Um, is the multiple national champion of the UE. He was as well an Olympic, Olympic athlete. He was in Rio. It's Yusuf Mirza. He's riding now for the UCI World Tour Team Colnago, Emirates Colnago. Um, so this is something I'm very excited. And this is going to be next uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday in a week. So um, I'm very excited to see. Anne, I wish you all the best. And Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to see you again participating in Hawaii and hopefully then soon in Dubai. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a good evening. Thank you.